What is currently happening programs? Welcome to The Grid VR, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in virtual reality. It's Saturday the 29th of July, 2017, and all I can say this week is, that's good, that's bad, that's great. We've got a Ready Player One trailer, an Arctica One weapons trailer, Alt Space's bad news, something called a Revenant, and much more. Today, I'm going to cover off the main events to keep you in the loop. So stay locked, crush that like button, enjoy, and welcome to The Grid VR. What is currently happening YouTube? Facepalm here, your friend in Oz and NZ, bringing you reviews, tutorials, and game clips, minus the sh**. You can follow me on Twitter, at Facepalm, with a one, not an L. As for here on YouTube, if you like what you find, then like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to bring your game face. Let's get it done. The news closest to my heart this week was the Ready Player One announcement trailer was shown at the San Diego Comic Con last weekend. And God, it's glorious. The movie is a Steven Spielberg adaptation of the best-selling Ernest Cline novel that centers on VR and the premise of an all-encompassing virtual world called the Oasis. Without giving too much away, for those who don't know, the hero of the story spends his time immersed in 80s pop culture throughout the book, which, if you've seen the trailer, will explain the massive amounts of cameos from characters almost all of you will recognise. And some people have to find some things. Outside of the trailer itself, HTC's Vive is the official VR partner of the movie, which means the public will be able to access movie-related VR content from the Vive port portal leading up to and during the release of the movie. All I would say in regards to the content is Please don't fuck this one up. You've got almost a year, HTC. A year. Get it right and please spare us the pixelated, low effort 360 experiences. This could be the gateway to a mainstream audience and people off the grid don't need to see some of the shit that we've seen. Thanks. And while Spielberg has previously expressed concern about VR as a storytelling medium, he did say at Comic-Con, VR, VR will rule, rule the future. future. I can see it now. Now you've inherited our problems. We didn't listen. We, we didn't listen. In all seriousness though, who better to direct this movie than the pioneering king of 80s sci-fi and adventure movies? And given the pedigree of the book and the studios bringing us this movie, whose names read like the who's who of 80s goodness, I'm excited. The trailer looks better than I thought it would and bears a striking resemblance to the pictures painted in my head by the book, so that's a good start. The Ready Player One movie will hit cinemas in March 2018 and I'll be washing away reality with its virtual counterpart up until that point. So I'll see you in the grid. Over to the games front, 4A Games have put a new Arctica One weapons gameplay trailer up on YouTube, which gives up some new info about the game, including details on three types of weapons we can expect to see. The Minotaur Revolver, which is a classic revolver design, can fire in a double action mode for rapid fire and single action mode to get you a single face-hating shot. The Carver Electromagnetic Pistol sports a larger magazine than normal and has some unique benefits that allow you to highlight enemies, program bullets and use the bullet curving firing mode we've heard mention of previously. Then there's the Taipan plasma gun, which is completely useless at long range because it is built with close quarters combat in mind and will demolish anyone game enough to get all up in your grill. The video shows how intuitive it is to mod your weapons as you go by simply attaching things like sights to your gun and then scrolling through recticles using a switch on the top of the sight. You can dual wield weapons for maximum impact and the trailer shows that a Wilson's Heart style teleport mechanic is used to get around. Round. And if you've seen my Wilson's Heart review, you'll know that despite the fact that I'm really not a fan of teleportation, it actually worked really well in that game. And that's because games like that, and Robo Recall for example, show that when teleportation is implemented effectively with the gameplay built in mind, it can work really well and can actually add to the tension of a game. The sound design and graphical quality of this game looks off the dial and I'm pumped to see what the full game from the developers of the esteemed Metro series have come up with. HTC announced that their own App Store Viveport will play host to Revenant, Rise of the Newhort, a triple A 
futuristic sci-fi FPS VR game under development by a Chinese studio called Dark Lord that looks to be a ridiculous name. Sorry, but what the f*** is a Revenant? Like, not what actually is a Revenant, but what kind of word is Revenant? And Newhort? Hey, the trailer looks sick in a wave-based shooter kind of way, the graphics look tight, and the sound design is damn cool, but Revenant? Rise of the Newhort? I mean, you just can't make up words and shit. I'm just gonna assume that someone blocked their nose while pitching the game Revenant Rise of the New Ward as the explanation for this one. But either way, game looks like it could be good. Link to trailer in the description. Have a peek and let me know what you think. At this point, I'd like to give a moment of silence for the Alt Space team, who will be closing their doors and shutting down Alt Space on August the 3rd. Man, I'm legitimately upset about this one. I had my first social VR experience in alt space over a year ago, and in the space of 20 minutes, I'd work my way through a giant maze at the bottom of a pyramid, met randoms, played disc golf, was introduced to Cards Against Humanity, served pumpkins and candle wax behind a bar while I watched two avatars make love in a fire pit while someone sang Bruce Springsteen's I'm on Fire, and some guy flipped the head inside out with a giant hammer, all while a Japanese avatar looked on confused. Good times. The team cited that another round of funding wasn't met to keep the project live, and I have to wonder, why were the investors funding this in the first place? I mean, I'm glad they did, but where is the money generated? I don't know. Another possibility that has come to light is that Virtual Immersion Technologies, who are a parasitic patent trolling company made up of two degenerate sperm cells and one giant piece of shit, filed a lawsuit based on a very unspecific pattern they created years ago, prior to VR as we know it in fact, with the sole intention of either bullying smaller companies into paying them money, or suing a company who sets up something at some point that is similar to the fantastic idea that they come up with. And while patents ideally are set up to prevent ideas from being stolen, which is a good thing, this is different. And before I get too pissed off about this, I think it's time to take stock and realise that whatever the case, it's gonna be a sad day on Thursday, August the 3rd, when Alt Space shuts its doors. So swing by the grid, pay your respects, and say goodbye to a beautiful thing. And briefly, the Mars 2030 VR experience has launched on the Rift and Vive this week and lets you explore 40 square kilometers of Martian dust mapped out from satellite data courtesy of NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, High Rise. Heads up, it's a little buggy at the moment, but if you like NASA's mission ISS, then definitely give it a burn. Revive, the free app that lets Vive users play Rift games on their Vives, has seen an update this week with version 1.1.12. The release brings support and frame rate improvements for games that didn't previously support asynchronous reprojection while using Revive, like Lone Echo, Echo Arena, The Unspoken, The Climb, and Wilson's Heart to name a few. And while these games were previously playable using Revive, they certainly weren't optimal. So this update is a very welcome one to say the least. Oculus Home has also had an update with 1.17. The update now lets you launch Steam VR games directly directly from Oculus Home, and while this was doable using the Oculus Tray tool, a native solution is well good. Facebook has announced support for streaming 360 degree videos at a data eating but eye massaging 4K resolution. Those streams are viewable in VR also with the Gear VR, though it is not supported on the Rift as yet. But it's good to see headway being made on that front as 360 videos are currently shared. A program going by the name NAM has uploaded a video of an environment he created in Google's Blocks application with the help from Unity. And and by God, man, the scale of the environment is large. If you are interested in VR modeling, then check the description of this video for a link to his tweet. It's definitely worth a look. Oculus has put a couple of videos up on YouTube showing some wicked face and hand tracking work that they've been doing. The tracking looks accurate, it looks smooth, it looks like it could be a sign of things to come, and it looks just like this dude in the comments. Lel. Crow Team just added a 4GB update for Serious 
Sam VR, The Last Hope, without saying a word. The update includes a skill tree, weapon upgrades by completing perfect runs, and a lot more. So if you have the game or were on the fence about getting it, then now could be a good time to jump back in. Seriously. Big Screen has had a monster update and one that a lot of us have been waiting for that includes, but is not limited to, a huge 100 foot screen environment with AI bots to fill in the seats so you don't feel so lonely. It also includes hyper-realistic dynamic lighting, flawless 1080p 30fps desktop streaming, massive performance improvements, native desktop audio streaming, experimental Windows 7 support, and more. I love this app, I love this update, and I love a team that listens to its users and actively makes things better. Much love. And finally, the latest NVIDIA VR drivers are trash. If you're on 384.76, then roll back to 382. 2.53 to stop any stuttering and VR you've been getting lately. And that's this week on The Grid VR. If you have more you would like to add, then hit me up in the comments below and let's discuss. And if you like this video, then crush that like button, hit the XO logo to subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!